Welcome back to Friday Night Baseball on Apple TV Plus, presented by Chevrolet. Alex Faust, Ryan Spielberg, Trisha Whitaker with you. Tight confines down in the concourse. But then again, um, when you have a building that's over a century old, you know, not much you can do. It's not much you want to do either. Well, you know what? You say that. 20 years ago, remember, they were thinking tearing this place down and building a new one. I mean, maybe it was a little longer than 20 years ago, but building up a new one over in the Seaport District. Yeah, no, no, that would have been a crime against everything. It's a good thing they did. And they've, they've done a wonderful job preserving this building. Ha Sung Kim with a base hit to lead off the fifth. Duran cuts it off before it can get to the wall. And he holds Kim to a single. A lot of action around the majors tonight. Back to Lauren Gardner in the studio for an update. LG. A lot indeed, Alex, as we get you out to Camden Yards, Rangers, Orioles, bottom four, Colton Kowser. Here we go. Payoff pitch off of Max Scherzer. He goes yard, puts the O's up one nothing. This is Scherzer's second start of the season. Same score in the bottom of the fifth. That's the 12th of the year, oh. LG, for Kowser. What, what is it? They moo. Yeah, a lot of yeah. moves in in Baltimore when he's rounding the bases. That's also a good sign for Rangers. Even though t there's a chance that Max Scherzer was dealing with his neck issue, he might not have even pitched. Right. High drive left field from Higashioka. Way back there and gone off the signage. Way over the monster. Kyle Higashioka continues to mash. A two run shot to give the Padres the lead. I mean, Higashioka, Mike Schill was talking about it. He's coming up with some huge homers for the Padres. That's now his ninth on the season. He just gets a cement mixing slider just sitting right there, and Higashioka crushes it. That's his eighth home run spilling in the month of June. That's every ball. kid's dream, right? Is hit a ball. You know, but this Padres team does come and get Kyle Higashioka played a bunch of times here when he was with the Yankees. Look at the slugging in June. He's right behind his former teammate Aaron Judge. Hot shot to right, twisting towards the line. That is a fair ball, and it bounces into the stands for a ground rule double. Bryce Johnson. With a double to continue this run of hits for the Padres, three in a row. Yeah, three in a row, and for Nick Pavetta, I mean, he was cruising. He looked untouchable. So you had the leadoff single from Hassan Kim, the hanging slider from Kyle Higashioka, and then you just get it down that right field line and create some havoc. Hunt. And Pavetta, you mentioned he was cruising. Third time through the order is a big problem. Obviously, the last three hits from the bottom three in the order, the second time through. The third time through, opponents hitting 314. This one, hooking foul off the Bamba Rice. Watching last swing from Arise after he hit it, he was like he was frustrated with himself, whether it was a pitch that he thought he could handle or maybe he felt something because he did slide and hurt his hand earlier in the week. There's a fastball. It's probably a pitch he thought he could handle. See the reaction. Yeah, I can't tell. Is that. Reaction because he missed the pitch or because the hand still hurts. I think hand still hurts. Arias hard hit ball up the middle for a base hit. The Padres have strung together four straight hits. They hold Johnson at third. But all of a sudden the wheels are starting to come off for Nick Pavetta. Man at the corners, nobody out, and Profar coming to the plate. Second year of the night for Horizon. Just how quick and short this swing is. It's the smallest in baseball. 
You know, it's not about exit velocity creating bat speed. It's about getting barrel to baseball. And we could tell when Arise got to first base, I mean, that, you know, his left hand is all bandaged up. That's his top hand. And it's not feeling very good right now. Well, I'm out. Three hits from the first 15 batters, but now four in a row from San Diego. It's bothering him. Well, usually he hits David Basias right in the chest after a hit. Oh. Two hit night for Arias sets up Profar is 0 for 2. Mentioned that eventful sweep against the Nationals, and he was front and center in it. You hear Profar. This is how they plead their case. It's the beauty of these field mics is you get a chance to hear how a major league hitter argues balls and strikes. James Hoy, the crew chief behind home plate tonight. And you're allowed to, you know, within reason, but Profar's kind of carrying that up, being upset about that pitch, and umpires would prefer, okay, I missed it. Move on to the next one. This gets by Wong on a fastball that ricochets right back to him off the backstop. Arias gets to second. Fastball that got away from Pavetta. It's just an off speed pitch where he doesn't finish it out in front, stays up. And it, could, it couldn't have had a better bounce. Yeah, you're right, Spilly, a slider. Full count to pro four. Here it comes, and it's ball four. So the bases are loaded with nobody out. And the Red Sox immediately, a couple guys stirring, and now some throwing going on. Yep. Here's Profar, takes the walk, and just flips the bat. He's been doing a lot of bat flips. He's just helping the bat boy out. Is he? You know, fewer steps needed, right? Right? <laughs> I mean, that, it's kind of the celebrations and whatnot got him in a bit of hot water against the Nationals. Nonetheless, it's a walk that knocks Pavetta out of the game. The Red Sox going quick with the bullpen, and Greg Weissert will make his 35th appearance of the season. Bases loaded, nobody out. In the top half of the fifth for Jake Cronenworth. The Padres have already taken the lead in this inning. Off a two-run homer from Kyle Higashioka. But what a spot here for Cronenworth. Yeah, what a spot for both guys. Well, Weiser was part of a very rare trade between the Yankees and the Red Sox. Sending Alex Verdugo to the Yankees, which they do love his defense. And then a trio of pitching. Quickly 0 and 2 on Cronenworth. Pavetta winds up going four. Seven hits. Responsible for everybody on base. It's so interesting how it just flipped like that. Like it, light it, switch. It was crazy. I mean, that's that's what we've said about Pavetta. You watch him throw, and you're like, I don't know how anybody touches him. Cronenworth. One run is in. Here comes a second around third. Arias scores. 
right behind Bryce Johnson, and the Padres extend the lead to 4-1 on a two-run single from Cronenworth. Uh, what an incredible piece of hitting. With two strikes, bases loaded, you can still stay within your approach, look for strikes that you can handle. This Padres team is second in Major League Baseball in batting average. There's a little change-up down and away from Cronenworth. Only the Astros as a team have a better batting average, and you'd never guess that. Cronenworth is hitting close to 400 over his last eight games. Gives the Padres a couple of insurance runs here. As Machado comes to the plate, one for two tonight. San Diego has won seven of eight entering the day. This is such an interesting point of the season for both teams, right in the thick of the wild card race. The Padres now in the second wild card spot in the National League, passing St. Louis. The Red Sox looking to get to their high water mark. Off. Now the Red Sox are going to have a little bit of a tough stretch right after this series. They've been playing really well at home. Look at how close that pitch was. Connor Wong does a good job of bringing it up, but they're about to finish a lot of games on the road before All-Star break. On the ground from Machado, up the third baseline. Devers charge, fields, throws, got it! Here we go here. Just the first out of the inning. But a big one nonetheless. And it looks like Machado might have tweaked something after he hit the bag, and Mike Schilt wants to go to the headset. Uh, Machado's been dealing with leg issues all season long. And you notice he just comes up starting to limp a little bit. Replay review powered by Zoom. What do you think? He's in there. You think he's safe? Looks like it. Look at the replay review center in New York. I think he's safe. A little bit of a double pump at third base by Rafi Devers. Yeah, I think he's. I think he's safe. There's no such thing as tie goes to the runner. You, know, you always hear that. It's not a rule. After you you can still do that in the company softball game. <laughs> <laughs> so the call overturned after the challenge for the Padres. Machado, though, clearly didn't look right after running through the bag. He's going to stay in. The bases are now loaded. This could be a huge moment of the game. Donovan Solano. Hunt! The chance to break it open. Still nobody out. Machado hasn't been himself for a little while. Up the middle base hit for Solano. And another two runs will score for San Diego. It's a 6-1 lead for the Padres. Just like that, the Padres just oh, stringing oh. at bats together top to bottom. Inning started at the bottom of the lineup. And it's just they can't get a guy out. Donovan Solano, known as Donnie Barrels, finds the barrel, shoots it up the middle. Now watch Machado, we are talking about his leg injuries. He made it first to third, no problem. It is unraveled here for the Red Sox in the fifth. Still have yet to get an out. As the Padres have exploded for six runs. 
Jackson Merrill now. Merrill with a drive, center field. Duran going back. That ball is gone. Jackson Merrill, a three-run shot, and the Padres have blown it open. Wow! What just happened? They've batted around, and all nine have scored. It was a one to nothing game coming into this fifth with Nick Pavetta rolling. And the Padres haven't made it out. Two homers on the inning, a walk, a bunch of singles. Hunt. And they have just quieted this Red Sox crowd. There's a fastball away. That's not a horrible pitch. But Jackson Merrill. The power numbers he's starting to show, it's the dead center. Oh! It's his 11th homer of the year. He's 21, Alex. He has eight in the month of June to go along with Higashioka. A nine run inning. The most that San Diego has scored in an inning this season. The most the Red Sox have allowed in an inning this season. Out of nowhere, the swing that Jackson Merrill has. I mean, it's it's short, it's quick, there's power, reminds you a little bit of maybe Mark Kotze, Freddie Freeman, there's a, there's a couple swings that you can see in your mind. And finally, the Padres get to make it out. Trisha. Yeah, guys, it's fair to say that he's a part of that NL Rookie of the Year conversation. He made his Major League debut at just 21 years of age three months ago. From June 12th to the 22nd, he blasted seven home runs in just 10 games, obviously added to it right there. But Merrill talked to the media about the NL Rookie of the Year conversation. He said, listen, I don't even care about that stuff. I could care less about Rookie of the Year voting or All-Star voting. He said, I care about our team right here right now and I care about winning and he's certainly helping them do that tonight guys <laughs> first round pick Trisha the Padres in 2021 this is only his Hi. third full professional season that's smart not to talk rookie of the year yet no the young rookie hasn't run into the rookie wall that usually happens in August man he is he's special this 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 lineup just like that threw together one for the ages. Oh. Thank you. San Diego, a team that has hit the long ball quite a bit this month. Thirty-eight homers now as a team in the month of June. That's the most in the National League. Ball four to Higashioka. And Merrill, one of the few players we talked about it earlier, the roster construction with the Padres, who's a homegrown talent. And Higashioka at first here as you take a look at the rookie ranks for Merrill in the National League. Might be a name that fans around the country will have to get to know. There's been quite a few Jacksons this season that have <laughs> yes. received some national attention. Jackson Holiday, Jackson Turio, but this Jackson has them all beat. Bryce Johnson. He doubled what? earlier in the inning. I, I think you and I are just still stunned by the turnaround of this game. It, it this came out of nowhere. The crowd was lively. They were totally into it. There's 
it's quiet. It's gone. Padres just knocked the wind out of him. In the air, center field. This is going to drift towards left and allow O'Neill to make the catch with the wind blowing that way. Second out. 21 plus minutes for this half inning. I, I feel for Nick Pavetta. I mean, he's he's probably feeling like a fan right now. I said, what just happened? He was cruising, and then he ends up four innings, five earned runs, seven hits. Arias has a two hit night. And he pops this up. Who wants it in the infield? It's going to be Devers making the call and the catch to end the inning. The Padres bat around. A season high nine runs in the inning. The first nine who came to the plate all scored. And they lead 9-1 at Fenway Park.